Hogs in need of a win today after an unexpected loss to Texas A&M Thursday. A lot of things in their favor today. One, they're in Bud Walton. Also, no Casey Prather, Scott Wolbekin, and Patrick Young. Not at 100%. Wouldn't last too long, though. Some good shooting in the first half. Kai Madden with the step back. Three, the Hawks. First three field goals were from three. Five of 12 from beyond the arc in the first half. Later, here's another one of those trays. Anthlon Bell from the corner. Hawks take a five-point lead. Later, Qualls, who struggled tonight. That won't go, but Kai Madden is there for the cleanup. Hogs would lead by one going into the half. They led the Packers 26 to three going into halftime in the second half came. And that's where we pick things up. Fourth quarter, only up five now. Romo gets in a little trouble until he finds Des Bryant in the end zone. And yes, he does get both feet down. Dallas up 36-24. Green Bay though, coming right back. Matt Flynn hits James Jones. Packers get within five later. More trouble. Romo throws the pick to Sam Shields. Ouch. It's Green Bay's ball with 250 left, and that would lead to an Eddie Lacy touchdown. Packers up one after that. You can probably call it Ranger Danger today. They were on the verge of being swept by the Blue Jays, and they started this thing off all wrong. The Rangers would trail four to nothing. They wouldn't score until Nelson Cruz sends one high to right center field. That ball gets loose and it's gone. Rangers only trail by three now. Then later in the fourth inning, Chris McGinnis, can you say double? He gets one off the wall. They give David Murphy the signal to score. Rangers only trail by two now, then in the fifth inning. We go to David Basil, who's up in Fayetteville. David fans have to be feeling a little more optimistic about the season. The football season for the state, and that's where Channel 7 sports director Steve Sullivan is, and it already looks like Sully is up to something. Sully, you just make sure you have a voice by tomorrow for the special. All right, hey, how about this? Get ready. Oh, gosh. The cuteness. <laughs> Unbear. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time to get things ready here in Mobile, Alabama. Just like both coaching staffs had plenty of time to prepare for tonight's matchup. And with that little extra time, you probably think they get more time to watch game film. And then when they get that extra time to watch game film, you think they'll be a little bit more comfortable against the opponent they're going up against. Well, not exactly the case for Ball State head coach Pete Limbo. I will say it's raining outside. Hopefully, the Hogs can make it rain inside, tip off about five minutes away. Now, one thing Mike Anderson talked about in the press conference, this is the perfect time for what his team is designed for. All that conditioning early on in the offseason, that fast-paced, action-packed game, fastest 40 minutes in college basketball. Someone just came out of the football facility right next to me and said, why don't we make this an annual event? A lot of repetition going on here in Jonesboro, and I'm not talking about going back to the GoDaddy.com both through Three years in a row talking about five coaches in five years two things you probably notice that's different about this live shot one I have a jersey on that says Sully on the front and it's a number seven now it's starting to become a one-stop shop uh, for success think about the names that you just mentioned that came through here Hugh Freeze now in the SEC Gus Malzahn who's uh, everyone knows he's playing for a national title right now and finally Brian Harson who's going to Boise State so uh, like you said young coaches see Arkansas State they probably also see dollar signs as well and day one of practice for the red wolves is tomorrow as for today media day ended about three hours ago so sully i guess it's time for me to get the howl out of here <laughs> in jonesboro for the red wolves and when you come to north little rock you always find some fun fans and if your team's playing like the charging wildcats you get face on yeah! I would never rather play any other sport than rugby. It's a sport that's often overlooked here in Little Rock, but definitely not forgotten. They're more talented, I think, than regular American football, but it's just a lot more fun to watch, a lot faster paced. It's everything I love about football, minus everything I hate about football. So there's like less breaks, they can tackle anybody, everybody can hold the ball. But it's not football, it's not hoops, and it's not baseball. But why rugby? Uh, rugby is one of those sports that uh, it'll change your life. Um, I didn't pick it up until after college. And uh, you take everything that you enjoy from basketball, from football, combine them into one, and that's rugby. It takes a stellar athlete. You gotta have strength, speed, and endurance. Yeah. 
and the ability to work well with others. As they hit the field with their rough and tough swagger, these guys say it's rugby that requires the most teamwork out of just about any sport. It's a brotherhood. It's, it's a super camaraderie game. It's a game which um, individual effort, um, you know, where you may play a great individual game, you still can't do anything without your team. Um, everybody gets to catch the ball. Everybody gets to pass the ball. Everybody gets to run the ball. Um, so everybody is offense. Everybody is defense. They play both ways. Drew it up, Gary. Good job. Head coach Donna Thomas started out playing basketball in college. Why did she switch? Rugby seemed to be a better fit for me because I got to hit people and not penalized for it like basketball. But whether it's hitting, tackling, running, or kicking you like, just know you don't have to be Superman to play the game. It's been said to me before, I'm not tough enough to play rugby, or look at me, I'm tiny, or look at me, I'm fat. Well, if you look at my team today, not all these guys came to this sport looking like this. It, it makes you want to be a better person. It makes you want to get in shape. It makes you want to be part of something greater than you've ever thought you could be in as an adult. It's a pretty simple question for the Raging Cajuns. How bad do you want another shot at an SEC opponent? Just one more chance to say they stole a victory from the nation's best conference. Uh, any anytime you get a chance to go into a stadium and play in front of 80,000 fans, and, and I can imagine they're going to be on the Kool-Aid. They're going to be excited. And let's talk about motivation. A day Hog fans will be hard-pressed to forget. Week two of last season, a Sun Belt team gets a victory over the Hogs in Little Rock. A 34-31 loss to Louisiana Monroe. And after watching Monroe get the win in Little Rock, you think the Cajuns would say, hey, we can do this too. Not exactly the case. They're, they're going to be totally refocused. They're going to be, uh, like I said, they're, they're, their players are going to get this thing going again. And last year to me was just a blip on the radar. That program is always strong. They've got a lot of tradition there, and I expect them to come out and run to blade. It was a different situation that had some things going on and a lot of distractions last year, and that's nothing taken away from Monroe and, and the game they played against Arkansas last year. But, I mean, it's a new year. They have a brand new coaching staff uh, leading them in a different direction. So, I mean, we're just going in there with our own mindset and, and, and trying to execute our game plan. Also a first-year starter at quarterback that they wouldn't dare look past. Yeah, I, I think Brandon Allen's going to be an exceptional quarterback. He's got the tool set to be, I think, one of the best in the country. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're inexperienced also at some positions, but you know, the only way you get experience is to get experience. And so he's, uh, you know, he's already played, so it's not like this is his first snap he's taken. So it'll be quite a challenge. They've got a lot of good players to go around. Him. As for those Cajun fans, it's almost a no-brainer. The clock, let's go ahead and go to the phones, ESPN1420.com. Hi, you're on Bird's Eye View. Longtime Bird's Eye View host Jay Walker says this is one confident fan base considering Arkansas's meltdown against the Warhawks last year. I think because ULM won last year uh, and because we beat ULM five straight games, I think that there's an attitude maybe among some of our fan base that we should be able to go to Fayetteville and win. Not to mention last year, the Cajuns traveling to Gainesville and almost taking down the fifth-ranked Florida Gators. Because of the Florida game last year, because Arkansas struggled last year, I think that leads our fan base to believe that this is a winnable football game. Now, they understand that they're going to have to go to Fayetteville. They're going to have to play great football. Uh, coming so close against Florida, they, they had the Gators on the ropes. And, and I think for most fans and maybe even the players, they look at Arkansas, a team that had a bad season last year, as maybe not necessarily a, a winnable game, but more winnable than most years. Anytime you go into the number five team's place in the country and, and play as well as we did, it's got to give you a little confidence that you can you can play on, on the field with anybody. In Lafayette, Louisiana, Robert Burton, Channel 7 Sports.